Booster 18 exploded during a pressurization test in late 2025, destroying months of work. Instead of major delays, SpaceX stacked Booster 19 in under a month, their fastest build ever. How did they turn this disaster into their quickest recovery? At Massey's, they placed a ship interface ring on the hot staging assembly, a test setup never used before. This validates how Block 3 handles extreme staging forces. What makes this the brilliant solution? Let's dive right in. Here's exactly what happened. When Booster 18's liquid oxygen tank failed, the rupture was catastrophic. The entire booster crumpled like aluminum foil under the force of escaping cryogenic propellant. Years of development work on that specific hardware vanished in seconds. But SpaceX's response revealed something most people missed. They had already learned the hard lessons from that failure before it even happened. The brilliant solution wasn't just building Booster 19 faster. It was how they fundamentally changed their testing approach. SpaceX realized they were validating components separately when the real danger lived at the interface between systems. The hot staging ring doesn't just sit between the ship and booster. It's where thermal hell meets structural overload. During staging, exhaust gases hit several thousand degrees Kelvin, while the structure carries over 1,300 metric tons of combined vehicle weight. How do you test that without destroying another full booster? That's where the Massey's test site setup becomes critical. In early January, engineers lifted the ship's aft skirt an interface ring onto test tank B-18. This created something SpaceX had never built before, a physical simulation of the exact connection point between stages without risking a complete vehicle. The hot staging assembly sits below, the ship interface sits above, and between them is the most stressed junction in the entire rocket. Can you see why this matters now? This test configuration does what traditional component testing cannot. When you pressurize the tanks and fire engines in this setup, the forces flow through the exact same load paths they would during an actual flight. The thermal expansion happens in the same direction. The vibration modes match real staging conditions. SpaceX isn't guessing anymore about how these systems interact. They're measuring it directly. What they're discovering is reshaping Block 3 entirely. Block 3 isn't just a version number. It represents the first Starship configuration where hot staging becomes standard operating procedure instead of an experimental technique. Earlier flights treated the hot staging ring as disposable hardware, something to jettison after separation to save weight. That approach worked for testing, but created complexity SpaceX didn't want long-term. Block 3 makes the hot staging ring permanent structural architecture, and that decision changes everything downstream. The reason comes down to Raptor 3 engines. Each Raptor 3 generates roughly 280 metric tons of thrust at sea level, compared to 235 metric tons from Raptor 2. Multiply that across 33 engines on the booster, and you're adding over 1,500 metric tons of extra thrust at liftoff. More thrust means higher acceleration, which means stronger forces trying to tear the ship away from the booster during staging. The old interface design couldn't handle that reliably. How much margin did SpaceX really have before something failed catastrophically during a launch? Not enough, apparently. The Booster 18 explosion proved their testing protocols needed refinement. But here's what makes SpaceX different. They don't just fix the immediate problem. They redesigned the entire validation process to prevent similar failures across all future vehicles. The Massey's test setup represents that philosophy in action. Instead of building Booster 19 and hoping it survives pressurization, they're validating the most critical structural interfaces first using dedicated test hardware. This approach costs time up front, but saves months on the back end. Booster 19 was stacked in under a month genuinely impressive speed. But stacking is the easy part. The booster still needs cryogenic proof testing, where tanks get filled with super-cold propellant to verify nothing leaks 
cracks, or buckles. Then comes the static fire with all 33 Raptors lighting simultaneously on the pad. Only after both tests succeed does the booster get cleared for flight. How many issues will they discover during those tests that would have destroyed Booster 19 if they'd rushed ahead? Ship 39 faces similar scrutiny. As the first Block 3 ship, it includes revised exhaust flow paths in the engine bay and upgraded thermal protection around the aft section where hot staging exhaust hammers the structure. These changes look minor on paper, but require extensive validation. The ship will undergo cryogenic proof testing on a thrust simulator stand that applies mechanical loads matching what happens when engines fire. Following that, engineers install the Raptor engines and conduct static fire tests. Each step confirms the hardware performs as designed under real operational stress. This is why Flight 12 keeps slipping. The vehicle exists, Booster 19 and Ship 39 are both stacked. But system-level validation continues because SpaceX refuses to fly hardware that hasn't been thoroughly wrung out. After individual testing completes, they'll stack the full vehicle at the orbital launch mount. Then comes the wet dress rehearsal, where the rocket gets fully fueled without ignition to verify ground systems, propellant flow, and countdown procedures all work correctly. Only after everything checks out does a launch attempt become possible. Current timelines suggest February is optimistic and March more realistic. But here's what matters. When Flight 12 finally launches, it won't be another test flight with fingers crossed. It'll be the validation of a production-ready design that SpaceX can build repeatedly. Block 3 represents the transition from testing Starship to operating Starship. And that difference defines SpaceX's entire 2026 strategy. The company flew Starship five times in 2025. For 2026, internal targets call for at least 10 launches, possibly pushing toward 12 if testing goes smoothly. That would mean roughly one Starship launch per month once Block 3 vehicles are validated. Can you appreciate how insane that cadence is for a rocket this size? Starship stands 120 meters tall and generates more thrust than the Saturn V. No vehicle this powerful has ever flown monthly before. And Starship is only part of SpaceX's 2026 launch manifest. The company conducted about 155 orbital launches in 2025, almost entirely Falcon 9 missions. For 2026, they're planning approximately 172 launches across Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship combined. That's another 17 launches beyond 2025's already record-breaking pace. No other launch provider comes remotely close to these numbers. Blue Origin hasn't conducted a single orbital launch yet. United Launch Alliance manages 5 to 8 per year. Ariane Space typically stays below 10 annually. Even Rocket Lab, which launches more frequently than most competitors, only reaches low double digits. SpaceX's 172 planned launches exceed the combined total of nearly every other major launch provider worldwide. And they're doing it while simultaneously developing Starship, upgrading Raptor engines, and expanding their manufacturing capacity. The Booster 18 explosion could have derailed this entire timeline. Instead, it accelerated SpaceX's learning curve and forced them to validate their hardware more rigorously. That's the real brilliant solution, turning failure into a forcing function for better engineering processes. So when Flight 12 finally lifts off, whether that's February or March, you'll be watching more than just another test mission. You'll be witnessing the moment SpaceX turned their worst testing failure into their strongest validation process. The Booster 18 explosion could have set them back six months. Instead, it forced them to build better, test smarter, improve their hardware more thoroughly than ever before. That's the real story here. Not that SpaceX recovered quickly, but that they used catastrophic failure as a catalyst for systematic improvement. The Massey's test setup, the rapid Booster 19 build, the rigorous validation protocols, 
These aren't just responses to one exploded booster. They're the foundation for sustainable Starship operations at monthly cadence. Block 3 represents the transition point where Starship stops being an experimental vehicle and becomes operational infrastructure. And if SpaceX hits their 2026 targets, 10 to 12 Starship flights plus 160 plus Falcon missions, they won't just be leading the launch industry, they'll be operating at a scale that redefines what's possible in spaceflight. No other company or country is even attempting these numbers. That gap keeps widening, not because SpaceX has more money or more engineers, but because they've mastered something fundamental, learning faster from failure than competitors learn from success. Flight 12 is where we find out if that philosophy holds up under Block 3's increased performance demands. The hardware is ready, the testing is thorough. What happens next will determine whether 2026 becomes the year Starship finally fulfills its promise. If you want to stay updated on every development leading to Flight 12 and beyond, hit that subscribe button for Space Update 24 hours. Drop a comment below with your prediction, February or March launch. And if this breakdown helped you understand what's really happening at Starbase, smash that like button and share this with anyone following SpaceX. We'll be tracking every test, every milestone, every step toward launch. See you in the next one. SpaceX is launching Starship Flight 12 this month. Booster 19 and Ship 39 are nearly ready, and the timeline perfectly aligns with Artemis 2's February 6 launch window. NASA just rolled back the platforms from their SLS rocket, signaling they're moving forward despite unresolved heat shield issues from Artemis 1. But here's the critical question. Which mission actually matters more for humanity's return to the moon? And why is Starship becoming the irreplaceable backbone of NASA's entire Artemis architecture? Let's dive right in. It's been nearly three months since Flight 11 lit up the sky in that unforgettable finale. We watched Starship pierce through the plasma curtain, deploy eight dummy Starlinks, then end in a spectacular double explosion as both booster and ship hit the water. That was October 2025. Since then, Starbase hasn't slept. Ship 39 was fully stacked back in November, sitting in Mega Bay 2 like a coiled spring ready to launch. But then came the Booster 18 incident, a LOX tank rupture that sent shockwaves through SpaceX's timeline. The suspected culprit? The COPV bottles, those composite 